Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Ditech, CTO DVS, and today behind me, two brand new pieces of equipment that we're going to fit and demonstrate and really promote the technology to you. But before we get into that, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you to everybody that already has done that. Your contribution is a massive driving factor to moving this channel forward. As always, DVS should be your distributor of choice. We've been there, done it, work with R&D, try to make all this stuff easier for you. We don't just shift boxes, we make the boxes. We try to make your life as easy as possible, delivering content like this, once you can see the functions and features, the quality, and also during the installation process, we find things that we can help address with you guys or the manufacturer to help drive efficiency and improvements in the product. That's what it's all about, working together. I've been there on both sides of the fence, installation, service, maintenance, commissioning, now uh, on the distribution side, leading up the technical product, uh, pre and post, etc. So I fully understand where you guys want the video content to be. So, moving on, what are we going to take a look at today? Behind me, two brand new pieces of technology from our premium CCTV provider, Hypervision. So thank you very much for making these because I'm super excited to get these outside in our car park where you can see how well they perform. And they will perform very, very well. So those of you that use the ColorView technology, it's fair to say, or safe to say, Hypervision have pioneered and led that color view technology, so color 24 seven uh, technology change. Lots of people now followed it and also give that demanding um, application to their customers via their technology. We've now got it in PTZs. So two different models, uh, color view PTZs. I'll turn it around so you can see, and we'll get one out of the box. So two different models. That's the first model. You can pause it and look at the thing. And again, that's the other model there. Da, 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 da. There we go. So, two different models. Four megapixel times 12 zoom. Two megapixel, 20 times zoom. So it depends on the area coverage and the zoom type that you need. So two megapixel and a four megapixel. True color view technology. So it's not like a hybrid or we're trying to solve a problem um, with uh, functions and features or you know, digitally uh, correcting image. True color view chipset technology. So we've had it in statics for a long, long time, you know, sort of three years now, the, the true color view technology, sort of around three years. Now available in the PTZ option. Absolutely fantastic. We've been wanting this for a very long time. It's now available in a cost-effective uh, design. So this is like the seven series. So uh, you've got like the four, five, seven, eight, nine series PTZ, so sort of middle of the road. So a good cost-effective product, lots of functions and features, widespread applications. And these are the two models available. With the color view technology, of course, the F10 aperture, bigger aperture, unfortunately needs more space within the camera housing. Therefore, the zoom ratio is generally decreased. If you look at some of the color view, uh, very focals we do instead of 2.8 to 12 they're like uh, 3.8 to 11 for instance um, that kind of thing so you do get generally reduced zoom capability lenses or the, the lens aperture is a lot bigger that f10 it allows all that light to come in which gives that super low light uh, performance and quality that you've come to expect from the height vision color view product and it is fantastic i see day in day out lots of your posts not just to dvs customers but generally all around the world of how color view is changing people's perception and interaction with cctv it is fantastic the better the image quality at night so you've got more color more detail the higher the chances of prosecution or interception or understanding of what's gone on if there is an event that needs analyzing so i'm all for color view technology where possible doesn't always work in every application but i'm a big believer in color view technology let's put one of these down let's take a look at what you get in the box what the camera actually looks like i'm going to put this on here ah, it's a little staging post so in the box itself we're going to look at the four megapixel version doesn't really matter 
which one they both look the same so inside the box you get a free wall bracket so the long arm wall bracket and it, this bolt just fell on the floor so it actually does come with a concrete wall bolts but it comes included with the uh, wall bracket the standard um, at height vision adapters type i know other people have adopted this but it's like a bane that fit in screw twist it lock it in with the allen key safety chain retainer and then an access flap to make or change test any of the connections that come off the fly lead of that ptz so as much as possible they've thought about how we can make your job easier for installation and service comes with a manual if you're like me we don't read the manual rj45 i am the manual this video is the manual hopefully uh, rj45 weatherproof jacket that's really important people still don't fit this i don't understand why it's included with every camera if they've made it as easy as possible even to the point you can retrofit them the gland is split it goes over the rj45 that's already made that if you haven't fitted it and you need to fit it you can retrofit them over a ready-made cable it's so easy people still don't do it okay you get the adapter so if you're using our high vision bracket they go straight in with that bayonet fitting if not we do a bayonet to standard thread type so if you're using WAC or Ultron style that thread type will go straight into their threaded stuff so that's included you get an allen key and more importantly this is what the camera looks like so the camera weighs two, three three and a half kilograms I'd imagine seven inch version it's quite small actually quite nice the fly lead rj45 with poe um it's got the 24 volt ac audio in out and alarm in out so it's got two alarm in two alarm out uh 24 volt ac uh four amp power supply we do for that if you don't want to use poe you can use the 24 volt ac and then obviously this is the camera itself um i haven't got anything to cut this with but basically you've got the color view technology you can see how wide this lens is let me cut it right so this is easier so you can see there nice you can see that big aperture we have there do it this way you can see how big that aperture is you compare this to a normal ptz like this one here look how big the aperture is in comparison general normal size much bigger size uh, lets more light in there and gives you that color image 24 7. so that's that f10 very focal aperture that we have in here um it's got accusense technology so it's got two-way audio built-in speaker here built-in microphone white light assemblies it should have uh, you know the high-end vca or the smart uh, accusense vca in there and um, what else does it have it has auto tracking so again those of you that love that auto tracking technology this would be available in a relatively cost effective um product uh, IP66 rated, privacy masking, all of the general stuff that you get included in the PTZ. This is a small form factor, super powerful, and we're going to fit this on a six meter column. So we're going to fit this in the corner of our car park, four megapixels. It's only 12 times optical zoom. I'm happy with that. It does not got to cover a large area. What I'm more interested about is the quality of video in, not in the night. I want to see how good this video can be in a generally lit area which we're going to find out quite quickly so we're going to fit this on that six meter column alongside that new ampr camera that you saw a video on previously or you will see a video on depending on how you watch the video content of course um so we're going to go fit this see how you guys can interact with it see what benefit it gives see the input like how good this more importantly how good the image quality is functions and features and how to generally set it up so stay tuned while we do that we're going to go and get that column down now get this bad boy fitted on a standard uh, mount that we have and we'll do the configuration on the web browser next so stay tuned people 
Okay, and welcome back. And we have now fitted the camera. There's been a bit of a delay because I wanted to get the camera up and get some nighttime footage, which I did last night from the comfort of my home using the Great Hike Connect app. So I will show you that separately. But moving back onto the camera, as you remember, it's in the corner of our DBS car park on an eight meter column. So we're gonna web browse into this. We're gonna quickly buzz through some of the features and functions. So logging in, uh, standard, no thank you, standard uh, Hike Vision uh, web browser functionality. You can see here, um, I'll take you on a performance tour of it in a minute, but let's get straight into the web browser functionality and we'll come back, show you the PDZ, the nighttime footage, job done. So, configuration. Model number, current firmware version. It is the latest I've checked. Don't forget, always check for the latest firmware. If it is available, download it. Functions, features, app, uh, quirky fixes, issues, etc. all done. Make sure you're up to date on the latest firmware, security patches, etc. Time settings, DST. Whoop. That's weird. Doesn't normally do that. No. Configuration. Go back into it. Always on a live demo. DST. R25 and about. Maintenance. Reboot. Restore. Export the device configuration. Firmware upgrade. Log. System service. Security on the log, very standard high vision functionality. You know the web browser by now, guys. Security, so the authentication, IP address filter, MAC address filter, security service, advanced security, certificate management. It's all there, depending on your application and need. Set that up as required. User management, add new users directly to the PDZ. Most people would manage that through the NVR or through the software. So network settings, already done. DDNS, does anyone ever use that anymore? PPPoE, definitely not. Poor, NAT, multicast. Again, some third-party systems will use multicast. So if you're using a VMS or an NVR or a network that requires multicast, this product will be able to support that multicast functionality and requirement. Just set it up as required here. Advanced settings, SNMP, FTP, email, so uh, again, for like if you're sending snapshots or if you're sending uh, VCA functionality, like a VCA alarm, integration to IMIX Sent and all that kind of stuff, yeah? Platform access, ice up and Hike Connect, already added to Hike Connect. HTTPS, QoS, 8201X, integration protocol, so you're on with. Network service, alarm server, TCP acceleration, traffic shaping, and SRTP. Video and audio, again, this is a four megapixel, 12 time zoom. We do a 12 mega, uh, two megapixel, 25 time zoom, but I set it up with four meg, 25 times, six uh, meg bit rate. I got enough bit rate on here to allow this to be fine. So uh, I've overcompensated. I could have made it a lot lower, but like everything in life, I want to make it as good as I can. HU65, definitely. Uh, I don't use HU65 Plus, to be honest. Uh, reason being, it I believe it causes more issues than it fixes, especially if you've got a scene where there's lots of light changes, lots of color, lots of people, lots of movement. On playback, you can find it can get jerky, so I tend not to use it. Audio, so we support the microphone in on line in. There's no uh, native uh, microphone built into it, but it does have line in, and you can adjust the input volume accordingly. Audio output is that built-in speaker, or you can change it to line out. If you do change it to line out, if you connect an external speaker, it mimics the functionality of the AccuSense, the LiveGuard, Active Deterrent functionality, so the pre-recorded messages will go out with it. Same with the two-way audio. That will also go out through that built-in uh, line out. Built-in speaker, you can use two-way audio using the app. If you add it to the Hike Connect, you can use two-way audio functionality like most of the PTZs and cameras with this functionality in. And all we've done is adjusted the output volume so it's the loudest it can be. Region of interest and then display info on stream. Image, so we've got the 
different scene selections depending on the application. I've just put it as outdoor. And then you've got image adjustment, exposure, and it, these are just adjusted more applicably. This tracking that PTZ tracking, I'll get into that in a minute. I'm just interestingly watching that. Um, okay, so exposure settings, focus, day night switch, backlight settings, white balance, image enhancement, and video adjustment, and then uh, zoom limit. So it's a 12 times optical zoom, but you can make it go into digital zoom. Again, if you go into digital zoom, it's not optical. It will digitally enhance the pixels. It'll zoom in on pixels. It'll look grainy effectively. It'll end up looking like Minecraft, let's be fair. But again, the default is auto. I could switch it to day mode. There is supplement light in this car park, so I could afford to put it into day mode and not have the white light on. There's enough white light in this car park, or enough light level from the external lighting that we have here that will keep the white light on the PTZ from not coming on. The light level is sufficient for the white light on the PTZ not to come on, but we'll leave it in auto in case the lights fail. The white light will come on and we'll still get a very usable image. And again, you can adjust the white light brightness here. I put it up to 100% because you want it to be the most effective it can be. What you may find is if the PTZ is fitted close to an object and you zoom in, you may get some uh, glare back from that white light and then you can adjust it. But don't forget, if you're using it as a true PTZ where you're zooming in at a further distance, that white light won't be as effective at the distance. So there's a definite trade-off there. OSD settings, again, I just put the camera name in here, makes it nice and easy for me at DVS and move that over there. I always put it over that side, I just forgot. You can put custom text in there. And then image parameter switch, you can link it to a preset or a schedule switch. And again, depending on application, you can change the different scenes based on different time periods. It may be really beneficial if you've got a really demanding application. PTZ functionality. Again, the one thing I do change, by default, it comes to 0 to 90. Again, at distance, as you zoom in, this is true to all our PTZ and other manufacturers. As you start to zoom in, you'll see it zooms into the road more. All you need to do is change it to the highest minus degree elevation and click Save. That will effectively allow the PTZ to come up in this housing. Um, so when you zoom in, you get much more distance on the zoom without it hitting the floor earlier. So that's the only thing I really do adjust. Uh, and some of the maximum tilt angles can go up to minus 20 for the bigger models. And uh, on the smaller ones, it's minus 10 or minus 15. The PTZ limits, initial position, it's tracking there again. Look. Nice. Then you've got initial position, park preset, so a, a park action. So you can do all of these as a park action. So after 30 seconds, it goes back to preset one. So generally, it'll always monitor uh, my car park. Privacy mask, if you've got areas that's high sensitivity, residential, you need to mask those out, then please use the privacy mask function. Schedule task. You can set any of those schedule tasks based on a time period. You can mix and match or at different times it does a different action. Clear config, wipe it all out, start again. Prioritize PTZ and position settings. We're not going to use position settings. We're not using like a GPS or anything. Now, event, we've got motion detection. Again, I tend to turn that off. Uh, you may as well, if it's motion detection, you may as well just put it on 24-7 uh, record or use VCA. Um, but again, you can use motion detection if you want. And you've got, uh, you know, standard arm um, and linkage method. Video tampering, tend not to use on a PTZ. When the PTZ is moving, can cause uh, false alarms. Quite good on statics, I find, especially if it's an area of high sensitivity. Alarm input, two alarm inputs, configure them as you require. And again, you can trigger the flashing alarm and light on there. If you add two alarms to this, like two, two red wall detectors, when you add this to the NVR, the NVR will detect these as alarm inputs therefore it's a really good way of bringing alarms into the system that can still rem be remotely monitored off-site alarm output just one alarm output exception and then you've got the uh, active deterrent functionality here so flashing alarm light output so i've set it to five seconds high frequency and 100 percent brightness but you can change it there and the time period that that's active if you don't want it you know nine to five when you're in the building then set the schedule accordingly same with the audio audio output. Again, very familiar. Warning, prompt, or custom audio, so you can actually upload your own custom audio. And again, being the live guard functionality, we have 
preset warnings in here set the schedule and it's on 100% from the audio tab that I did earlier and it also supports two-way audio via the Hike Connect app don't forget so a really powerful piece of equipment now Smart Event they've moved off the VCA is covered in this new menu most of the new cameras have this sub VCA menu now but again uh, audio detection you can do the if you have a microphone connected to the audio input on the camera that allows the audio exception detection so sudden increase sudden decrease etc audio loss detection and you can link it based on your application again storage sd card i don't have one fitted admittedly but if i did have one fitted um what we do say is moving forward the cost of an sd card is negligible if it is a critical camera or you're worried about the network or the recorder being damaged or stolen for some reason or being footage deleted because of staff issues i don't know all of these things put an sd card in the camera and get it to record 24 7. if something happens to the recorder for any of those reasons you still got critical evidence on the edge now that could be super important and again if the recorder is broken or the network is down turn on the ANR function, the automatic network replenishment in the recorder itself. When the recorder comes online, it backs up the footage from the SD card back to the recorder also. So another really handy little tool. Now under VCA, this is where you set up your, you know, your line crossing detection. Now it does do uh, face recognition, I'm not gonna focus on that mode. Don't, it shouldn't be used on a PTZ in my opinion. Uh, too many variables down to the user it should be uh, if you're not really accurate high performing face recognition use statics fitted correctly in the right place so smart event intrusion detection and again based on accusense technology we have four uh, intrusions four lines and we've got region entrance region exit unattended baggage object removal and the advanced is the engine configuration so you've got the tracking zoom ratio so you can increase that that's how it zooms in and click that save you want it a bit more actually i want it up to 50 let's do 34 percent weight to stop weight to lower tracking duration maximum 300 you can adjust that but then my uh, park timer will override that 300 seconds click save intrusion detection all i've done is drawn an area here human and vehicles yes threshold is three seconds so an object has to be in this area for three or more seconds before it starts to track so it's quite a simple little thing to do. Now, uh, again, we've got four areas uh, and you can adjust that based on your need. And you've got maximum size and minimum size objects. So I can adjust that. If I feel it's too sensitive, I can put the minimum and maximum size objects in there. Army schedule 24 seven, adjust as required. And then linkage method, notify surveillance center. So that's our software and our Hi connect app. And you've got smart tracking. Yes, this camera supports smart tracking through any of these VCAs, as you saw earlier, and then link it to the flashing alarm and audio warning because it is a live guard camera, active deterrent. You want to make best use of that. So smart tracking, live guard, flashing light, audio, two-way speech through the app. What a super powerful piece of equipment. Now, if you want to look at the performance of the camera, so we go to live view. A lot of you are used to this live guard technology now, so I don't want to dwell on this too much. You know, uh, you know, High Vision pioneered the technology, they pioneered the color view technology. We're just bringing it all together in a PTZ and offering an app to you. So hopefully the network is a bit more stable today. So again, only a 12 time zoom, but you will see based on the size of this building, I think this is more than adequate. So this is the side of our building here. You know, normally well covered, well protected. But again, if anyone was in this area, you'd still get very good detail. You'd be able to monitor and observe that scene. So a 12 time zoom, in my opinion, is more than enough for this kind of application. So again, this is the estate that we're on. My OBS is just frozen. Oh, yeah. Sorry guys, my uh, OBS just froze. Apologies about that. Let's just put this in. I'll put it back to HD now. So that's the maximum zoom ratio we can achieve optically. And if I put that back to high res, 
So it depends really what you're trying to achieve. But again, 12 times optical is probably enough for most people. And then back to his home position here. And that's DVS. So you get the idea, really good image quality. The color view brings all of the, as color view live guard even, brings all of the active deterrent, that perfect, really crystal clear image clarity to you guys. Hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll do this in a eight megapixel 4K variant, you know, in a nice small form factor that's really convenient. But what I will show you now is the footage I recorded last night in the comfort of my home. There we go, let's... Uh, we'll use the VS player. I forgot about the uh, codec in uh, Windows Media Player. So if you can see here, so this is last night, seven o'clock, it was dark, and you can see there is a couple of floodlights on the top of DVS. So again, it does give you know, good image quality, because there is light there. But the color view performance is absolutely outstanding. You know, you can see Biffa there, you can see all of the color. It's really good definition compared to where we were sort of two, three years ago with CCTV camera technology. It'd either be black and white or a much poorer color image, in my opinion. So this video is about six minutes long. I do take command of this PTZ using Height Connect. Surely, let's see if we can speed this up. There we go. So this is me taking control of it via my app. You can see that's our next door neighbours. There's no one actually there. It does focus really quickly. So the idea I'm doing that is to show how quick that does focus after you've moved it. Look at see, look how clear that is there. And again, the guy's one of our sort of uh, colleagues down at the end there. They still work late at night. Bless them. But you can see that's the same junction I just used on that color uh, demonstration and live view there. And again, you still get lots of detail, good zoom ratio. You know, it is windy, you can see the trees are windy, so the column does move in the wind, but it's still, you know, a very good image, in my opinion. And then we start to scan the estate. There you go, that's down the other end. So you can see they normally do all burnouts down there, so we normally have a camera looking at there permanently. Very, very good, in my opinion, and that's the side of the building I was talking about uh, earlier. And again, there is a few white lights there, because it's a fire exit. But again, very good image performance. You know, I'm very, very happy about the performance of this camera. Again, that's DVS, that's inside, so we're looking inside the actual building. And again, that's it. So, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Color View PTZ. I just wanted to capture what it does, the benefit of it, the image performance at night. What I would say is if you put this in an area that's absolutely pitch black, like any Color View technology, let's be honest. If you put this in an area that's absolutely pits black, the likelihood of getting an image quality of this is, is, is highly unlikely, to be honest, because we do have supplement light here, and the white light performance of the camera won't give you that really rich depth of color in the image over the distance that we've just sort of done. Especially at 12 times optical zoom, you're not going to get that image performance in the pitch black. Um, you'll still get an image, and I guess if this was pitch black in the car parking with no external light, no starlight, it was an overcast day, then the image quality would be compromised to some extent. It'd still be very good and you'd still get a reasonably good image, to be fair. But it wouldn't be as good as, as you're seeing now. Um, so you do have to pick your technology based on your application or you have to be realistic and say it's good up to, you know, 
a six times optical instead of the 12 times optical and set that expectation now. It's really important that you understand that um, because some people fit this technology thinking it's going to be perfect in the pitch black, you know, through its whole optical range. And that's the same with our uh, motorized very focal model as well. But again, if you've got some light, you know, like you are, like on in most applications where you've got external lighting, street lighting, starlight, etc., this is going to be very, very beneficial. I hope you enjoyed the video. Lots more content to come. Please drop any comments in the video below. We thank everybody for their subscriptions and your time. Thank you very much. Take care. And don't forget, make sure you contact DBS for all your CCTV and security needs. Bye for now.